Our brains are like one big swarm. One neuron on its own is pretty dumb, just like this lonely ant. But when ants swarm together, collective intelligence emerges. And when neurons talk with billions of other neurons, consciousness arises. <laughs> Without any one thing in command, we somehow become self-aware, make decisions. All of those simple ants and neurons swarm together to create intelligent systems. And these robot swarms work the same way. Welcome to the Grass Lab at the University of Pennsylvania. So this is a great example of how a robot swarm behaves. So you, what you're seeing is individual robots uh, that are executing independent motions, and yet these motions are coordinated. We try to make sure that all decision-making is local. In other words, control is decentralized. You can't possibly think about controlling all the robots with a central node. Vijay and his team use these infrared sensors to ask the robots to make shapes or follow a leader. Then it's up to the robots to talk to each other and carry out the task. We have some organisms extremely simple that are capable of coming to solutions that are, I'm not saying perfect, but very, very efficient. Simon Garnier studies simple organisms like ants and slime molds that come together to form big actions that look a lot like intelligence. So the slime mold, it's a weird organism. It doesn't have a brain. It's like your own entire body just fused into one big cell. Slime mold can swarm together to more or less recreate the U.S. highway system. Scientists put an oat flake on major U.S. cities. Then the big yellow mass goes out searching for the flakes. And after that, it shrinks down and finds the shortest path between all the cities. Human beings were individually pretty smart, but collectively we're still very dumb. Our reaction to social information has not been optimized by evolution to be able to handle the amount, amount of information we are facing every day. We are obviously way smarter than slime mold. But slime mold, ants, and neurons often beat us when it comes to working collectively, because they've had millions of years of evolution to figure it out. We are still at the stage where we are a little bit too selfish, and this is because our social intelligence is not as evolved as the social intelligence of the ants. So now we want to replicate this social intelligence. Instead of one thing in command, like a president, CEO, or general, we want our own swarms to go out and make decisions, like this project for the Navy. None of these boats are controlled by a human. Instead, they can sense there's an oncoming threat to their battleship, and they all huddle together to defend against an incoming attack. And then there's the locusts. <laughs> The Navy is researching these drones to fly autonomously, talk to each other, and destroy targets. Humans would still give the drones the big mission, like find this terrorist target, but then the drones would be on their own. And in some sense, when you develop a technology that could be used in a dangerous way, wouldn't you rather that the good guys develop the technology first so you know how to defend against that? DJ imagines benevolent swarms, scanning destroyed buildings after earthquakes or tsunamis, not massive drone attacks. And for now, the technology just isn't there. VJ's bots are still in the lab, and the biggest swarm is just over a thousand bots. I said the only way you can hurt yourself with these robots is if you try to eat one or something. <laughs> Otherwise, they're pretty friendly. Yeah. Right now, all these robots can do on their own is build a starfish, or the letter K, and that takes a little less than 12 hours. One application I like is the idea of programmable matter. You can imagine it's like a 3D printer, but instead of printing with filaments or plastic, you're printing with robots. And instead of having a printer, the robots are moving themselves around. <laughs> So you could print a robotic wrench, then have it reconfigure into a hammer, or pliers, or screws. All the while, no one robot or person is in command. Looking at these systems sort of challenge the way we think about what is 
an intelligent uh, being and what is actually a complex problem. Intelligent systems are already evolving all around us. Swarms have been here way longer than humans. They are already inside of us. We're building them. And all these simple little robots could band together to help us or hurt us. Technology destroys jobs. We know this. It has the potential to make entire professions obsolete.